My stance is Undertale is pretentious trash, but my entire reasoning behind that is long-winded. Um, my, my only reasoning on why Undertale is a good game is the sole fact that it is an RPG that a lot of people need to... It reintroduced a question that a lot of people are scared to ask at the current day and age, which is basically, why do you hate something really because you think you're supposed to hate it? Because why do you hate monsters really because they're monsters? Except should, should we start this now or should we save it for the grind? Ha! <laughs> Except the monsters in Undertale are a bunch of more or less assholes that have that more on racism. And well, that's the entire game. The entire game is racist. No, Except, you can play. You can replace monster with any race and no, basically make Frisk. No, but the not. Not Frisk and the player, but the monsters, monsters are the racist no, no, no. ones because they do the exact same thing, just assuming all humans are bad. The and game has no which, is, which is the exact point of what I'm trying to make. Is that that's basically the exact argument that people are in right now. Why do why why should I hate someone just because they fit a characteristic? The, the message... monsters hate Frisk because he's human, Frisk hates them because they're monsters. The message Undertale was trying to go for was one about, like, prejudice and not judging, except when the people who, in this case, the monsters, who claim, oh, not all monsters are bad, but within the literal story, they have outright decided all humans are bad and you're supposed to not want to kill these guys or they're being super prejudiced and because they were um, attacked due to a misunderstanding that's explained within the story involving Shora. My entire problem is that Undertale's message is really skewed because the so-called good monsters I see no good in them because they're basically racist assholes. Because they're holding on to, oh, humans tried to attack us, which was only because humans saw a, what they thought was a monster attacking one of their own, so the monsters hit out and the entire issue with Undertale in that aspect, and I have many other issues, it's just this- Well, yeah, but you can't- Okay, let's- no. Technically, the only monsters that I try to make... kill- There's only two monsters that try to kill them. Make... Everything in the game- Everything you... in the game comes into an encounter, which can be ended with you not hitting them, and them eventually going away, because but... you either run away from them, or go through the interaction area. But if you- there's But only... they will The attack... only two monsters that try to kill you are Undyne and Asgore. Um- and no. te technically Metaton. No, Muffet tries to kill you. She thinks she, uh, she thinks all humans uh, torture spiders by ripping their legs off, so she tries to kill and you. The other but, she, uh, but if you buy a spider donut from the beginning of the game and show up... Or her, Spider yes, Cider. Oh, I, I have not played Undertale, but I know all of its secrets. I know how to do a true pacifist run. If you get any spider bake cell item and eat it, in front of her, you end the battle instantly. Yep. And that's the best way to do mercy, otherwise you have to survive a lot of rounds for a spider to call, well, send her a telegram and go, they're not that bad. And I know how to do all the different endings of Undertale. Technically, Undyne and Asgore were the most direct trying to kill you, but the other monsters, because it's a video game, they do damage, and they're by books within Undertale and some other monsters bring it up. They were told to, if a human was to ever get down there, kill on sight, so it's like... And also another... But yeah, but they think they're justified. And also another one that bothers me because I feel you cannot use the justification of he doesn't know on this. The volcano enemy thinks his lava helps Her lava. Me. I don't care. I'm just, it's Undertale. I don't care. But, it, but, it thinks its lava helps people. Okay. I don't see a problem here. How much has that thing ended up killing because But does it's that fun? make him bad? You have to think. 
Because that, that, that makes him indirectly bad. It doesn't make him directly bad. He thinks he's doing a great Bad king! Your king, the one that you look up to and trust the most, told you that you could be free if you killed you. You don't like being down there. There's nothing to do down there. And you love the surface. That's the... True, it's definitely it... sad. And true, Undyne and Asgore, even though all the monsters technically have the ability to kill you, Undyne and Asgore are the only two that actually have the intent. They try to, they try to multiple times. The entire Asgore fight is literally him saying, Either you're going to kill me, or I'm going to kill you. No, first, this is a thing I just, I need to say here, because I finally have the ability to. This has been building up for basically over half a year since Undertale came out. Everyone says Asgore is trying to not kill you. Then why does he have the attack where he rapidly swings the trident left and right? Fan yeah, that's not trying to kill you at all. actually argue that Asgore does not have the intent to kill, but knows he must kill you so that he can get the final yes. soul this game, this, he needs. This world also really hits on that exploration factor. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, that's just... We're in the middle of rent. That's, that's, basically the point, that's basically the point of Asgore is that Asgore's entire thing is that he doesn't want to kill humans, but he realizes that he has to. Unfortunately, what Asgore doesn't realize is that what Toyo makes a point to in the True Fast of Ascendant where, you know, she says, you could have just killed one human, took their soul, went through the barrier, and then convinced the humans to take the barrier down. <laughs> Which Asgore never did. He instead wanted seven so he could become all-powerful and just free the monsters to begin with. Yeah, I have, like, chronic disdain for Undertale. Because like said, we save the rest of the the, one of the biggest problems the community have is, is, is not really the point about the monsters. I've, I've seen that the community has the biggest problem when it comes to the term Char. Oh, yeah, that's And right. they think that Char is a separate entity, but Char is not a separate entity. Char is the is basically the personification of you. Yes. Which Chara is Chara is meant to be you, and that's why I have to Which go... Which is another problem. I have to go off on this. Chara also means friend. Or joy. And that one. Chara was once a living human. Who, and some people have, this, what I'm about to say, this was more of a fan thing, but the fact that a few people came to this conclusion, Chara, it was never explained why they jumped in to the underground, but a lot of people look at Chara and go, oh, they had suicidal tendencies, which is, that's more of a fan thing, but that's fucked up that several people came to that conclusion. That you've made a... But, to be fair, that is a fan theory. But, the more concrete thing... Chara was once alive. Chara... Yes. And they died. The... Chara fell down the hole. Just like Friston. Um, except they survived. They... But it wasn't long-lasting before they died. Well, well dying? And Azrael? Absorb their soul long enough to pass the barrier to take them to the golden flowers, which is where the human misunderstanding thing came from because the monster standing over a human child, they thought killed them, but then Chara, and this is more my Again, perfectly logical like, conclusion. That's the, the conclusion there is pretty logical, but my problem with Chara was more Chara represents the player, not Frisk, by, and this is a reason I really don't like Undertale, Carson feels the same way, because they represent the player, but they are always represented as evil and uncaring. Toby actively made the most direct parallel to the player, the pretty much evil, uncaring monster, and that angers me because when you design a game, you should not personally design a representation of your player base as an evil monster. It's one thing about like a game where you could design a character and you choose endings 
But it's. But I mean, how is it any different than controlling a silent protagonist? Well, te technically, he is multiple. Frisk is a 100% silent nice. protagonist. Frisk! Which is yes. why Frisk is a non entity. Now, here, here's where I've drawn an exception. You remember how I hate silent protagonists? I don't Doing think. So Frisk, I can hate Frisk for the same well. reason I hate other silent protagonists because Frisk is silent because of Chara. Wait a second. Frisk, Are you if Frisk was not silent, then Chara could not have the effect in the story that he does. Frisk is designed to be a non-entity that is just enough there so you can have something to control. But how is that any different than the reason? The, the reason it bothers me for Frisk is that farther goes back to the Chara thing, and you are blatantly meant to um. You're bit yeah, getting tongue tied. You're blatantly nice. meant it to project Gosh, onto Frisk, and that's why this is something I am going to spoil with Undertale. The internet no, has already sorry, uh, uh, done the this. The uh, once again, it's your fault if you haven't played it. <clears throat> sorry for that. But uh, the creator, Toby, when people asked what to name the child at the beginning, he said to use your own name, because the child you're naming at the beginning is Chara. And basically, go that further going, as I said, back to the, the Chara is basically meant to be the, a player being a whiny, self-absorbed, um, murderous asshole. A silent protagonist is one thing, How but... How is it any different? I don't understand it. Well, the, the, the main thing about Char is that Char fell down the hole, he met Ezreal, him and Ezreal were friends, and then, Ez and then for some reason, Char had a weird villainous intent. His villainous intent was to basically kill Ezreal and take over, monster, take over the monster kingdom. And the plan was to make Ezreal eat the flowers. Ezreal ate the flowers, but just got sick and was not dead. So the other plan to escape was to basically have Char told Ezreal that he was going to eat the flowers. Spoiler alert, spoiler alert. And so Ezreal ate, so Chara ate the flowers, killed himself, committing suicide, so that Ezreal, so that Ezreal had to absorb Chara's soul, and by absorbing Chara's soul, could get through the barrier. He told them that he was going to return once he had delivered Chara's body to the humans. Now, the plan for Chara was to use Ezreal's newfound power, because of the fact that apparently human and Monster Souls being together is so strong that he's all powerful to kill the humans. But because of Azrael's good nature, he stopped that and basically ended up getting beat up so bad by the humans on his return because they thought he had killed Chara that he returned to Monster Kingdom through the barrier, still with Chara's body, if I'm not mistaken, they were, and died. They were still fused at the time. Yes. Which is also another thing that's kind of, it's uh, basically, Chara is also surrounding a lot of plot holes in Undertale, and that's the fact that determination is the strongest magic in the world. It is the thing that makes Frisk powerful, and is the thing that also makes Chara powerful. But with that being said, it is also why Chara can basically, in this instance, go from Flowey's body to Frisk's body. Which was by the player's intent, and that's what I was gonna say. What Sean was asking about. Intent. Um, no, player's intent the, in the, the story. Chara only exists in Frisk if the player kills people. Which this is my problem with. It, this is a personal hangup I have. Yeah, so that's but that's it's still what I don't understand here. You have to kill people for that parallel to be drawn. No, in which but case, it's just. It's but still, it's still followed the entire no, statement of the no, no, Chara, even if you do a true pacifist, you always figure out that you've named Chara. Yeah. They are always evil. Yes. I thought you always said say you had the capability of being evil. No, no, no. No, no. Chara, Chara, Chara is, is an evil. evil entity. And you, named, you named Chara at the beginning of the game, so technically you are naming yourself. Yeah. So you are... Technically, Chara, so the problem, which means that you are the evil entity. It's that. The so issue. the problem is not the fact of anything except for the fact that Char is in every ending. Yes. If and Char was not present in, any, in every ending, your problem would not exist. It's about your and the, uh, it would be less strenuous, yeah. And the other thing... Because... And the other thing is... Uh, so like if it was only that if it was only that Char was the potential of being you, you be your potential of being evil, 
I would still be kind of pissed off, but, but it would be... But, but it would make sense then. It would make sense in the confines of the story, because then you were, you know, realistically... You were fighting being, yourself you the entire game. You and kill everybody. You were fighting yourself the entire game. And that would make more logical sense. My because, hang up... Because you're fighting Flowey. Flowey is a Asriel turned into a flower. Or and Chor... Put into the flower, but by putting Asriel's soul into the flower, they put... Chara in the flower with Asriel. Chara and Asriel were absorbed by the flowers and they became flowery. Evil intent from the player is the canon reason that Chara breaks out of flowery and revives as kind of that pseudo ghost form. My problem. My problem is that even in a true pacifist run, you're, you name Chara, and Chara in all canonical, like, variants of the game. Han, the farm, not a lot of people know in that room. You can actually walk around the edge and you can leave and go save if you need to, so. That, that's actually a good tip. If, if someone was playing along and they wanted to save or wanted, needed to Just stop. Just to the ramp. I am, but not a lot of people know you can save. It is kind of something you wouldn't think you could do. So, my problem is and this is how I will phrase this, it's because Toby by design, by making the player named Chara and making the player and encouraging them to name Chara where Chara is always evil I have this very personal hang-up where it's like, this... You're mad because Toby basically told you to that told you to name yourself and yourself is technically evil. And will always be evil and you're actively encouraging a player base. And this is where I feel because, and I'm just going to come out and say this, the ideas that Undertale is trying to to, like, give off, I feel the, the questions it's bringing up really had no bearings in a fantasy-based RPG. And bringing... Except, which is why that game is so technically so important. Because it did something that isn't really brought up. But there's no reason that it should ever be brought up. Okay, well, that's that's why I, basically I, it's so different. I feel that's like that's why an extremely uh, close-minded. No, uh, partly to the success of an RPG. Um, you have so many RPGs out here that are basically copying other RPGs and everything that they have in every aspect, whether it be story, systems, or just plain old characters. And so you have to do something different in order to get noticed. Here's a strike. That. Here's a slightly stranger way of putting it. Before Undertale came out, everyone made uh, jokes about the NPCs just being that NPC. There was uh, like old robot chicken skit about stormtroopers having a family and everyone would make jokes like that. But after Undertale came out, everyone was like, wow, I never really thought of these people probably do have like families and children and all that. But before that, it was just a joke no one paid attention to, but this game that's trying to be smart comes along and points it out. Really? We didn't realize that after Paper Mario, where literally the enemies that you're killing in all the other Mario games have families? Because, again, nothing ever addressed it, but... Paper Mario does. Pay well, Paper Mario addresses it in that you'll see their families, you don't get told. Yeah, the only difference is the fact that in, in Mario, you don't get told, oh yeah, this Koopa that has no home. Well, Undertale is literally playing with emotions by going, oh, anything you kill might have been a mother or a father or someone's kid or something. Yeah, it's like, no. you are an asshole. And that's, it's, main, and that's one of its main aspects. Yeah, that's which is my entire problem. I, yeah, I don't... I, see, I, I can't agree to that problem. And I also... Uh, we Some of the problems was Undertale, we kind of can't... That's what it. we call an artistic choice. And also some of the it's problems... It's a pretentious choice. No. Yes. Also, no. um... As a, I think it's pretentious to call that pretentious. As a side point, <laughs> some of the... Things in and of that itself, that is the definition of I, and you are. I need to say that we 
Unfortunately, we can't fully word the full problems with Undertale because some of the parallels we've made is basically Undertale playing with emotions and feelings. I, I like this better boss better than the other one. I did not say this boss was awesome or anything. This boss is to go to that for just a minute. This boss is crap. Kingdom Hearts 2 so far <laughs> boss is crap. Wait, maybe I can do this. But, yeah, wait, like, try to pull out its gravity. Oh, look, that didn't work. The problem with this boss, to just talk about it for a minute, but why it's better than Kingdom Hearts 1? 2. Oh, yeah. Kingdom Hearts 2 version of this boss is. Like, well, version of Jafar is just more annoying than gimmicky. This is. Obnoxious just because this is kind of long-winded, but I feel Kingdom Hearts 2 is worse in just how kind of hard it is to, like, you, you do a little bit of damage, and then he'll do some stuff, but there's a lot of time wasting. This is just kind of, this just takes a minute by virtue of... I've gotten really lucky on this pop before. Mm. Must be the recording curse. <laughs> this boss is like five times better in the Chain of Memories version. <laughs> I agree with this. <laughs> I was okay. Can we talk about the game? I was about to talk about the game a little bit more, but. I was gonna make a Chain of Memories comment where in the Chain of Memories it was nice because it was like convenient because you know, it was a 2D arena initially, so this was less strenuous. I just think you better recode it when you get the around. You think he like lands every Finally. Time, every little while. You see if you had Yeah, see if we had known how much help it had, it wouldn't have felt as long. Well I had scan, I just didn't have enough AP to equip it. Then take off something. No, else. but his other yeah, abilities like are good! But scan. No, no. Okay, scan! It only feels like less time, it's not actually less time. Scan is nice, but the problem is he has better battle abilities. Well, so, well, technically it can be the last time because if you had Scan, you would not want to pack steal more damage. No. Also, I've literally gotten two P two different up magic upgrades here. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Why does this world have so many bosses? It literally has four bosses. Cause Agrabah. And only one of them is debatably good, and it's still <laughs> crap. Oh, and she still gets kidnapped. And also to go back to the Jasmine? under tell, Jasmine! some not in the exact way we've brought up, but some people have brought up similar problems. Like some call me Johnny in his review of Undertale, he said he feels the game gets kind of heavy-handed with the no-killing metaphor because of how much it just drives it into your skull with a jackhammer. Yeah, yeah, it's technically a six it's hour a experience, so. Yes, but he's being a pretentious douche about it. I mean, it's a six hour I mean, experience. I, I can see that to some degree, but at I the can same see how, time, I, I, I feel like some of it's not unprecedented. I feel like it would be annoying if it was like, you know, full scale Final Fantasy experience where it's like, you know, you're playing in 13 hours in and you're still getting it drove through your head, but like, it's just. Speedrunners have brought it down to a two hour experience. Oh, and that's <laughs> also a, another Whoa, thing that here. Toby hates speedruns of Undertale. Well, he hated it early on in the game because it was basically spoiling the story of the game. So he was like, no, please don't do it. No, he hated it early on because he was saying that people are, like, not experiencing the game properly, but then, like, after getting kind of keyed, and then people were talking about speedruns for. Charity and stuff, and then he just kind of backed off. Backed off. Yeah, but he's, uh, but no, none of them have still made it to like a game's done quicker. Or anything. I know, the, but people were trying. Was the, the yeah, point. they were trying. I mean, he just did. 
He just didn't want. He wants the same thing that everybody else wants, which is basically the you, they, games are supposed to be an experience, and he wanted people to experience the game and not have it spoiled for them. That's the reason he's sent. But I mean, in reality, the thing about Undertale is that it's, it's it, if you don't know what you're doing, you're bound for I'm probably going to finish the game in a day if you have nothing else to do. Are you going to do every ending in a day? Probably not. But are you going to finish it in about a week? Probably. Sean, did you ever finish Undertale? Uh, that never required me to actually sat down and played it. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's required my computer not to be a jerk. Uh -huh. I, I figured as much. And then the thing about... The, the thing with what y'all were uh, saying well. is that... What's funny I about that is that technically when left. you fight Look, as Ezreal at the end of the True Pacifist ending, you. you are fighting Ezreal Chara. And basically, you are fighting Chara, for your freedom, and as soon as you get Chara Ow. out of Ezreal's body, Ezreal turns back into his normal self. Um, and at that point, you can assume Chara is Chara. Chara is an Anaheim in the final boss. He got that power. He only got that powerful by absorbing all the deal, monster deal, souls deal, in the deal. underground. But he still had a Flower's personality. And Flower's personality is because he has Chara. Uh, and then, Not that's why Flowey loses the power to go along with change him. the game in the genocide Jack. ending. And that's because a, only Char can mm, change and save the game and sorry, restart it. Uh, yeah, that's another thing, kind of like a uh, chalker. Um, the, uh, uh, this is going to uh, take uh, um, paper, some explaining. I, now, because of I I how much I don't try. like Undertale, I've started calling Azrael all. Serial Work Murderer out. because that's right what his out. name is an anagram for, as subtle as a jackhammer, Toby. Just so I just call him Serial Murderer now. I actually had to stop myself to say Azrael there. <laughs> That's another thing of he, a lot like Chara, is meant to represent the player, so once again is a whiny, self-absorbed, entitled brat. And this is how Undertale represents its players. All to drive in a message about not killing in and a he's game. into a flower and cares about his best friend. <sighs> Even well, he literally he's, cries he's about his best friend, and even Adam. at the end of the game, tells Chris, "I know you're not my best friend. You just look like him." Hey, I did my part. And regardless of the fact that his best friend literally tried to kill his dad, his mom, and everybody else, he still loves his best friend. One should be aware of letting it burn too And another thing, the no killing more. A um, moral the game whoa, 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 spends the entire whoa, whoa, time beating uh, into cool your head. Come, okay? After I'm you like, yeah. beat the game, yeah, if you go all the way back to the very first screen, um, Asriel pretty deal, much yes. says, That's not we gonna always work. And we grant you so the game also just said the moral it's basically spent the last six hours beating into your head is go, entirely go to pointless. Her. Your vessel is waiting. Mm -hmm. this is no I literally oh, could go all day with this. I feel, I feel like it's just like a scary Why are you doing throwback to actual reality. What's which the is catch? what that game tries to um, dub itself in. What's the catch? Said. He, the Azrael comment, he makes a point like, when you leave the underground, he literally says that Seriously, being that. nice to want. humans and being nice all the time and not fighting doesn't always work outside of the underground. Undertale Which, it basically says and it does it, he's it says not the wrong. And but that's a problem. And, that, and that's the truth about the message in itself is that he says you have to be nice to everybody, but it doesn't work all the time. Because it doesn't. My entire problem with... I mean, that's just a fact. I mean, that's the... No, it is a fact, but it's a fact in a game where if you're nice to everyone, which is the only way to see that dialogue, everything works out. His point is not wrong, but within the context... I, I feel like within the context of the game, it still works. Because Chara the is the, the epitome is... of that entire statement. It's because regardless of how nice you are, Chara still wants to kill everyone. Even you. Even his best friend. But he said that he acknowledges that 
you are not. We've our time for ranting. Mm. Okay, we'll have to save the rest for grinding. <laughs> so... Sean has already done an exit, so I'm gonna call this a recording where I normally don't cut on the menu, but he was already exited, so see you guys next time with more Kingdom Hearts. So, see you all later. Alright, Kingdom Hearts will be the focus of the next one.